Dutch team and the best and the better than the best and the fire team beat your chest. He's a schoolboy football, a team could rise and a team could fall. But you never will know until the whistle blows around, come enjoy the show. He's a schoolboy football. This is a schoolboy football Manning Cup quarterfinal action. It's at the Anthony Spalding Sports Complex in Kingston and St. Andrew. Yeah, St. Andrew the parish, but the municipality of Kingston and St. Andrew. It's stats against Mona, and this is a must-win encounter for Mona. Stats, they can manage to have a draw, but that also would be contingent on some other results for them. St. Andrew Technical, they have made it to three Manning Cup finals since 2017 and they have lost all of those occasions. Mona, on the other hand, they have been progressing nicely. The quarterfinal, then the semi-final last season. And as Craig Butler has said, the only objective now is to go all the way. Not even a finals appearance would suffice. He definitely needs a victory. Well, we are at the Anthony Spalling Sports Complex I mentioned earlier. The grass is green. But let's pause for the national anthem. The national anthem of Jamaica. So, yeah, you see the beauty of the pitch, but 22 players, as well as the referee, will run around this pitch, all with the hope of making it to the Manning Cup semi final and also an automatic qualification to the Champions Cup as well. St. Andrew Technical, they have had that distinction on quite a few occasions. Mona, they would have made it last season for the first time in their history, but the dynamic of this matchup, Christopher Taylor, is that only one will make it this time. Yeah, very close matchup. Both had eye openers so far in this quarterfinal round. I think both these teams would have come in as favourites, as we as, as we see the officials. Carvel Banton will be the main man with the whistle. Rolanza Bennett, Jaheim Morrison, and Romaro Francis is able assistance. But yeah, St. Andrew Technical coming off their first loss of the season, the first time they had trailed, the only match that they had never scored in. So a big deal for them as we see their starting lineup. So in goal, they have Jaheim Williams, a back three of Alex Xavier Gooden, J. Lloyd Smith, and Kemar Thompson, five in the middle of the park, Richard Livingston, Ajitai Marshall, Dwayne Atkinson, Kevin Hall, and the two men at top, the 14 goal man, Leon Brown, and he's joined by Dwayne, make that Andre Salmon, who also has a nine goals for assists, the coach by Philip Williams. 3 5 2 is what they will play, and yeah, great to see, and very important for them that, yeah, is back into the starting lineup. How much? Dwayne Atkinson. Yeah. And coming off of injury, seven goals, seven assists to him so far, and I think that will add more balance to the start starting lineup. Here's a look at Mona High. Akeem Bernard, the three goal man, is in goal. Stevon Johnson, Dante Peralta, Carlton Brown, Alex Suazo, Kishane Gordon, Romarion Thomas, Rubino Gordon, Denzel McKenzie, Demario Harris, and Maquan Parchment. They are coached by Craig Butler. Dangerous going forward. Akeem Bernard has been brilliant between the sticks for Mona High. Have missed quite a few penalties of recent. Diamond 5 is their formation. Not sure how you want to fully describe that. But yeah. Mona High have looked vulnerable from the wide areas in terms of defence. It's been a problem that they have had since last season. And with St. Andrew Technical being so fluent, especially on right and left, that's where they could look to do damage. But Mona certainly going forward, a very fluent team generally, have had opportunities, 
have had the leads and had opportunities to go further ahead in the quarterfinals. Missed penalties and missed chances has cost them, and because of that, just two points. The referee, Carville Banton, sends them off. Of course, St. Andrew Technical, they have in their own repertoire, their arsenal, that big switch from Alex Xavier Gooden to Richard Livingston from midway the field. And I tell you, it's metronomic. The accuracy and the control of a Livingston, definitely something to note. And let's see how they are able to do that. Livingston on the ball. He's trying to connect with Leon Brown. He wins first time. Had much more time than he reckoned, I, I believe, Chris Taylor. Yeah, time on his hands. Livingston, the leader. And I'd like to see him, him improved energy. And so will Philip Williams, the head coach, as you see there. Spoke about the fact that as a leader, Livingston, his body language, his energy on the park needs to be a little better against Kingston College. Shoulders were shrugged, head was down a bit, and he wants to see more energy from his captain. Here's Alex Xavier Gooden for St. Andrew Technical, doing some defensive duties there, as Mona tried to have a quick break. So the drums are here, as you can hear, and as you see, Craig Butler, the technical director of Mona High. So, Mona, they have a, a corner. In the second minute of the encounter, Denzel McKenzie standing behind it, lifts it in the area. Jaheim Williams, experienced campaigner now, and Abel Hans boots it upfield. Ball breaks nicely. Went to Salmon. It was a handball, but. I'm sure Salmon thought that perhaps advantage should have been played. Exactly. I'm not sure why Carvel Banton eventually blew. Philip had, the, had the ball, were ahead. Philip Williams asked the same question yeah, and, as you said and in screen. full control. Why would you look at this? Clear handball, didn't blow at, at first, right decision. Starts driving forward. Yeah, anyhow. Here's Gooden. J. Lloyd Smith and both J. Lloyd Smith and Gooden, they both good in the air, having three goals, most of them from headers. Heard you mention as well that the other quarterfinal will be played at, at, at Prison Oval. That was a bit of a surprise to me. I thought there were better surfaces around and available that they could have played those matches. And unfortunately to me, right now, Prison Oval not at its best. Not at its best. And when you think about other venues that could have been used in the parish of St. Catherine, if you want to give a St. Catherine a home fixture, as it were, you know, there are other venues that, you know, many of the coaches thought would have been better suited for such an encounter, especially in the quarterfinal of the, the marquee competition for the urban area. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. First yellow card there to Carlton Brown. Leon Brown brought down, but yeah, definitely agree. And as far as I'm concerned, there should be no home venues in the quarterfinal round of things. So that being said, yeah. I, I think that that is something that needs to be altered moving forward. And many coaches have complained about it. Here's the delivery booted out by the Mona defense. It came to Gale. So, and funny enough, there's another game between Heidel and Tivoli set for that venue tomorrow as well. So, you know. And when you think of other venues that could have been used for such an encounter, such as here again, in the case of Tivoli. Uh, but even today, even today, as you said, um, the Ashenheim Stadium is available, Michael is available as well. Even Heidel's home ground, I think, is a better pitch at this point. Royal Lakes, yeah. Royal Lakes than, than, than Prison Oval. So that venue, a bit disappointing for me, sorry to say, but yeah, Prison Oval has seen better days and does need some improving and doesn't aid the quality of football right Certainly. now where over the course of the last year or two we have seen a lot of improvement in the surfaces that we are using credit to ISA, the clubs and so on for that i guess one of the problems happening in the parish of st catherine is that they are well apart from portmore as a region spanish town really doesn't have a, a team in the top flight as they would have had rivoli in past years that would have used that venue yeah good point 
That's a poor challenge. Alonzo Bennett there. Smith brought down, Smith committing the, the, the infringement, but yeah, Bennett with a flag on that far side. Sorry. Assistant referees doing a lot of the games of recent. I, I heard he's making strides in terms of maybe FIFA selection. Maybe he's one of the assistant referees that they are looking at. Rolando Bennett has been around for, for quite some time now. He's on a lot of these TV fixtures, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Has a love for the game as well. You know, he definitely has his own opinions on some of the matches and what some of the coaches need to tweak. So he has is a student of the game, not just a, a referee, as we would say. You know, but he, and doing so many of the games as an official, you're right there. You're seeing it. You you know the players. You hear the you yeah. hear them. You hear that you see the language. Yeah. Right. And a lot of these officials play the game as well, or have played the game. Myron Thomas, of course, the player to watch for Mona being treated at the moment. So the player up now. So it's a free kick for Mona. Tamarin Harris and Rubin Corden among some of the players who have gone forward. Carlton Brown also there. Denzel McKenzie. That was low. It's flicked in at the near post. Rubina Gordon. Rubina Gordon has put Mona in the lead in the seven minutes of this encounter. Jaheim Williams in disbelief, in dismay. Mona Pride have struck like a lion. Dead ball opportunity, good ball put into the area from McKenzie. And a flick on. Another assist for McKenzie, his 20th of the season. Denzel McKenzie and Rabida Gordon picks up his 14th goal, leading goal scorer for this Mona team, and that's a big lead. It was really a deft touch there, using his head literally and figuratively. And Kian starts now, rebound. Of course, they went behind against Kingston College, and frustration set in. You mentioned earlier the body language and all of that. Kian, they rebound. The pressure definitely mounts on them at the moment. A bit patched up is Greg Butler, but there is some comfort to his heart amidst that goal. So, Kian, St. Andrew technical rebound. Let's see, Kian Mona maintain their lead. St. Andrew technical trying to play through the press of Mona. Ajitai Marshall there being tackled. By his opposite number 10. Denzel Washington McKenzie, confirmation of the 14th goal for Rabina Gordon this season. Here's J. Lloyd Smith. Happy to circulate the ball in their own half. Ajitai Marshall was forced a bit wide in the matchup against Kingston College. Didn't really play as a traditional number 10. There they really had a defensive masterclass and ensure that he only had opportunities in the wide areas. And the 
they were able to really marshal zone 14, if you call it from a zonal system, that area just in front of the 18-yard box. Giving away possession is St. Andrew Technical, Mona now trying to come forward. Here's Demarin Harris. Kevin Hall trying to do some defensive work. Hall did well on that occasion. Puts him forward. Was trying to connect with Leon Brown, but that was intercepted. Here's Mona. Swazo. Play broken up. Swazo gets it back, releases Harris. And Xavier Gooden in a no-nonsense mood. Part of the back three for St. Andrew Technical. Coming under some amount of pressure. Mona not giving them a lot of time on the ball in their defensive third. Thomas to McKenzie. Turn ball was wayward. Here's Thompson now. Lifts it forward. Should be easily handled by Keem Bernard. Well, that's a bit of keepy uppy. Lots of wind at the venue, and uh, that will definitely affect the throw-ins and the long balls, especially, Chris. A slip there, as you saw. The Mona supporters, they've really come in their numbers. You hear them, and they're excited about the prospects of Mona. Of course, not only the Manning Cup semi-final at stake, the chance to play in the All-Island Champions Cup knockout, the draw for that would be next Tuesday. That comprises of all the Manning Cup semi-finalists as well as the De Costa Cup semi-finalists. They'll be drawn against each other through seeding. Of course, no Manning Cup team will play another Manning Cup team in the first round. So a win here would guarantee any one of these teams a place in the round of eight, the quarterfinal round of the Champions Cup. That's where it begins, of course. In previous years, it was a round of 16 as the first round of the competition. But the players, the teams had a lot of traveling, a lot of matches. Ball played by Stats. Salmon there was trying to get on the end of that one, but it was a bit too big for him. Smith. Press has been minimized from a Mona perspective, given Stats the amount, the amount of room they need just to progress forward. Offside flag up there. Andre Salmon. Nine goals and four assists for him this season. Livingston loses position. Here's Kishane Gordon. Slippery players, Gordon. Has speed as well. Gets around two players. Can he whip it across? He's bundled over the ball, but the referee says nothing to do about that one. Taylor Smith. Not guilty of an offense on that occasion. Here's that ball I mentioned earlier, and perhaps for the first time this season I've seen where it has not gone as scripted. Simple message from Greg Butler. Wants to see the ball delivered across the area. Good skill by Gordon. 
has been in and out of the starting lineup, Gordon. Last tele televised game, he came off the bench. Dangerous players are skillful in the wide areas. Five goals already to his name. When you look at this matchup over the last 10 years, it's always been close, as I said, two 1 0 wins for St. Andrew Technical. And then their last game in the quarterfinal round, a 1 0 draw. So, very close, generally. But it must be said, Mona haven't found a win against them. Sam and they are really trying to apply the counter press. Nicole Gale in a no nonsense mood as well. Salmon regains possession, lifts it across now. Arriving at the back post was Richard Livingston, but Mona able to clear. Break coming for Mona. Looks to be Gordon. Can he deliver the pass? Went for the shot. Jaheim Williams was there. Yeah, well, he still didn't follow the instructions, did Gordon? <laughs> His coach, Craig Butler, said he wanted the ball delivered into the air. Did look up and decided that the pass wasn't the option he wanted. And that was going wide in any case. Williams making sure of it, but that shot wasn't on target. Not the best attempt or decision from Gordon. Well, Marion Thomas was waiting right at the penalty spot. Almost for a tap-in had he found him. So corner kick. Mackenzie behind it. That's high. Still kept in play, but... Yeah, well, actually, they regain another corner. Yeah, St. Andrew Technicals just look flat at the moment. They haven't started with, with energy at all. Almost as if they're still thinking about the, the Kingston College defeat. And this is where Mona must pounce. Get another goal here, maybe even another, and take this game away from St. Andrew Technical. Very flat, look at that. Not yep. winning any of the 50-50 duels. And even that from Kevin Hall and the supporters perhaps have a lot to think about and consider. It really sent shockwaves that loss against Kingston College and you know most of the supporters would have left saying that yeah, St. Andrew Technical they have the better of play, 70% of the possession, but they just couldn't break the Kingston College defense. They were well organized, they really stuck to their task. They didn't have the individual quality that perhaps would have been able to break to breach the defense last year in the semi-final a wonder strike from their number seven at the time since gone on to european football saquon satchwell broke down kingston college and then frankson also added more misery in the first half with a wonder strike himself so moments of individual brilliance but they didn't have it last game against kingston college and could it be that that is really where they lack in the final analysis yeah last season they dominated the game early against kingston college were very reliant on dejon richards and they took that 2-0 lead casey did manage to pull back one early and then stats went further ahead that 3-1 uh, late dejon richards strike wasn't enough to prolong the game. Yeah, I saw St. Andrew Technical actually did a very good job on him, even though he ended up scoring and assisting amazingly. But yeah, it was probably the first time in that season that persons really paid him well, extra attention and, and, as I said, were very aggressive towards him, played him out of the game somewhat. But yeah, he was the key for KC last year. This year, more of a team effort. And a lot of players stepping up at different points. And you think of how good they were defensively, Kingston College. That was really an eye open. I thought it was a really stellar effort against a, a stats team that have scored over 60 goals already this season. It was the first game of the season that they hadn't scored in. I mean, that was amazing. I don't think they have, based on their play so far, they still haven't recovered from that. 
these first 20 minutes, they look dull. There hasn't been a spark at all. No, they're slow to the ball. As you can see, even passes not being controlled. Let's see what they can get going. Here's good. Pushes it forward. Kevin Hall will try to get by his marker. Could challenge that. He regains possession. Nicoy Gale, the holding midfielder, brings it to J. Lloyd Smith. His pass, weak. Running battle now. And Romarian Thomas has an empty goal. He was forced wide. Here's Denzel McKenzie. McKenzie! McKenzie has scored for Mona while Jaheim Williams was down. The misery is compounded for St. Andrew Technical. And they're in all pain in 21 minutes of play in the quarterfinal encounter. He's still holding his leg. And they're holding Craig Butler. He might be holding his heart after this one. Yeah, well, credit to Mona. St. Andrew Technical all out of sorts. Jaheim Williams coming out. He actually injured himself, did Williams. Tried to bring down Thomas, actually. Let's look at this ball over the top. When it's intercepted here, ball over the top. Nice pass to Thomas. Thomas now moves it away. He tries to bring down Thomas, obviously, to stop him from going on to goal. Injured himself. Made no attempt to get back. Then decided to lie down instead. And, yeah, as I said, St. Andrew Technical just haven't woken up yet. In fact, the, even the players slow in getting forward. Mackenzie got there to help Thomas ahead of the St. Andrew Technical defenders. Where were they? And credit to them. An assist for Thomas yet again, his second of the season. And yeah, Denzel Mackenzie is in double figures on the season. He now has 10 goals. 20 assists. Difference maker. I tell you what, it has not gone the way of stats. And all the preseason prognostications have been thrown asunder. And you mentioned that they were asleep. I tell you, it was a, it's a nightmare for them at the moment. Can he calm his team? Can he inspire hope in a team that has won at the under-16 level? Ten goals for Denzel McKenzie, as you see on the screen. 20 assists, 30 goal contributions for the national under-17 representative. Nikoi Gale. Standing behind this free kick for St. Andrew Technical. Listed in the area. Here's Livingston. Livingston tries to sh shoot, but Swaza was in the way. And Kishane Gordon trying to mop up the resulting deflection. Puts it out for a throw in for stats. Think about when a goalkeeper's attempt to foul a player doesn't work. Wow. Credit to Romarian Thomas. He really stood his ground. Perhaps other players would have gone down to draw perhaps a card, but he recognized that, well, I can still fight, and there's still opportunity. And even though he was forced wide, the recovery of the stats plays, you mentioned it earlier. I, I just can't help but mention it again, Chris. Yeah, well, I... I it wouldn't have suited Romario and Thomas to go down at all because obviously by getting around the keeper, it was just a goal in front of him, so he would have been looking to convert. Yes, he was trusted wide, but obviously as well, I'm not sure which defender it was that was making his, his way back towards the line. But down, yeah, good download, job. Download the Sportsmax app today, get it on the Google Play or the Apple App Store and watch Schoolboy Football on the Sportsmax Plus channel for free. And of course, there are other channels that you can take your feast of football action, tennis, and other sports as well. Yeah, download the Sportsmax app. Dream start for Craig Butler and his troops. 
They have now touched over 50 goals on the season. 51 to be exact. And they've just conceded some seven goals. So excellent work from Craig Butler's team. Many concerns against the Sitantra technical team, especially how they might have been exploited in their wide areas. But they have done very well. And we know how potent they are going forward. And they have proven that. St. Andrew Technical have not come to play yet. And I think what Mona are trying to ensure is that they never do. At this stage of the competition, this is the flattest I've seen St. Andrew Technical in, in years. Usually coming into a lot of these matches as underdogs in previous seasons against the big teams. Now, as front runners, you would have to say, and as favorites, they have faltered. Yeah. Perhaps that plays on their mind. More pressure. So now the technical trying to get a spot. Kevin Hall. That pass to Salmon was a bit too heavy. A man in prayer is Akeem Bernard. Prostrate. All smiles. Kenzie has found a big switch to Romarian Thomas. Here's Smith. Mona will certainly be very aware that they held leads in both of their quarterfinal games, couldn't keep them against KC and St. Catherine, respectively. And that will be something that Craig Butler will be reminding them as well to maintain concentration. It will be interesting to see if they are to get a penalty this time. What would happen? So far they have seen, what, five or six different penalty kickers. And they have missed their last three, Mona. Uncharted territory, this for stats as well, because before the KC game, they had never trailed this season. Now they are actually training by two goals. And this is how the current group looks, the live group. Mona on top with five points. Casey in second. Based on goal difference, both with five points. And yeah, St. Andrew Technical and St. Catherine completing the four. Of course, just the top two to go through. So just to give you some context to that as well, uh, Kingston College, should they win their encounter, they definitely would top the group with seven points. Mona only can uh, go as far as five points, having had two draws before today. Craig Butler there, alongside his principal, Kevin Jones. Kevin Jones, of course, uh, coming from a football powerhouse in the form of Clarendon College as a principal for Mona. He's at most of the matches. Has been a good period. So here's Marshall for stats. Takes a throw quickly. They're in a good area, stats. Referee ignores the shouts. Currently nil all between Mona and St. Ca between Casey and St. Catherine at Prison Oval. Similar time there. Thomas doing well to evade the challenge of J. Lloyd Smith. He looks ba badgered at the moment, Smith. He's not thinking of making any changes to his team right now because they're in a, in a purple patch, you could say. Wouldn't want to break up the chemistry at all.
So the St. Andrew technical contingent certainly very much here. Flag and all. Can they spur on their team to a dramatic comeback victory? So, Kingston College in their encounter against uh, St. Catherine are down to 10 men. That's an update. We'll give you some more as that game progresses. Awkward fall there for Livingston. Carlton Brown doing the defending. And good to see him back on his feet. The captain, he has work to do. Because, man, St. Andrew Technical, well, it's been a real slow start. Preseason favorites for most. And right now, they're heading out at the quarterfinal stage. Here's Salmon. Fighting Salmon. Shockwaves. Ball booted up for Mona, header on the way of Peralto. His ball forward, pushed forward by J. Lloyd Smith. Livingston flicks it forward for Marshall, gets the return ball. A dangerous area now. Can this be a moment for San Andrew Technical? Livingston in chase, has the ball. Tries to go around one, but Swayze is there. Plays it out. Good recovery from St. Andrew Technical to gain possession. That was a good challenge. Here's Kishen Gordon for Mona. Going the opposite direction now. Here's McKenzie. Romarion Thomas almost got around Alex Xavier Gooden. Lifted forward now.
It'll be no goal. Partman tried to play that one forward. St. Andrew now. That ball came out. Kevin Hall. Ball play for Salmon. Akeem Bernard alert to the danger there. Montague to your left, principal of Woolmers High School for girls. Part of the leadership of Issa. In the 37 minute of play, let's see what the rest of this half holds for us. Suazo to Peralto. Whistle there on the play. Yellow card being shown to Denzel McKenzie. Challenge that against Livingston. Livingston still being treated after that challenge from Denzel McKenzie. Kishin Gordon there, getting himself refreshed. Smith behind the kick lifts it in the area. Handled well by Bernard in goal for Mona. Again, Mon sent way wide of the area, but they still have possession with Peralta now. They sit in the area. He was offside, Kishane Gordon. Kevin Hall. The sense of urgency is certainly not in St. Andrew Technical's play at the moment. A 
Doesn't look very disturbed though, Philip Williams. Perhaps he's quietly confident. Here they come. Of course, they're trying the long ball forward. Marshall. Thompson now. Of course, but they're taking a key eye. That shot. From the foot of Marshall there. Straight to goalkeeper Bernard. Here's Mona through Gordon. He brought it outside. It's a throw in for San Andre Technical. To my eye, Chris Taylor, there is an absence of the utilization of their midfield in a lot of their build up, San Andre Technical. So, a lot of times when they are at the halfway line there about again they try a long ball and it yeah, just they it, have it hasn't settled. worked yeah. they haven't settled from the start and obviously going two goals behind hasn't helped them at all but they just seem very panicky and frantic in the back line even when Gooden and, and company pick up the ball they're just looking to boot it out without looking as you said a lot of times bypass in the midfield I find they, they, they going forward they are very narrow not a lot of movement not a lot of switch plays and this aerial ball. But here now it goes out wide. Let's see. Kevin Hall puts it forward but intercepted once more. And certainly the windy conditions not favorable for that kind of play. It's not an enclosed venue. So even that has to be calculated carefully when you strategize how you'll play. But one of the things about St. Andrew Technical that I've noticed the continuing their system their structure and uh, you can't really fault them because repetition brings that kind of reinforcement but the adjustments that are needed sometimes in tight conditions are necessary in in championship level football yeah Casey and St. Catherine still locked at Ninol. As you said, Casey down to 10 men. Kamal Patterson, their right back. The player sent off. So Casey down to 10 men against a very talented St. Catherine side who still have an opportunity to go through. That match being played at Prison Over. St. Catherine could go through if they beat Kingston College by two clear goals. Here's Gay. Lifts it forward. Sam. Charge down quickly, Peralta now. Boots it forward with that one, only back to Gale. Here's St. Andrew Technical. Receive a throw deep in the Mona half. Livingston on the ball, didn't get to lift it across. Gets another throw taken quickly. Sammer gets the return ball, tries the shot. Blocked. Here's Gale. Good. Brought down by Peralta. Yeah, big free kick. Looking a little better now, St. Andrew Technical. Word coming in. St. Catherine have got the go-ahead goal against Kingston College in the 36th minute. Jacques Watson with the goal. 
still in the first half there. 36 minutes down, St. Catherine 1-0 advantage against 10 men, 10 man KC. Four minutes of time to be added on to the first half. We are in the first of that four. Here's Gooden. He definitely can't strike the ball. Let's see if he can get it around the wall or up and down. Good. Straight to the wall. We'll try to go by, but that's broken up. Very good from distance, Gooden. Struck the crossbar in the match against Kingston College was a I don't even know if it was as much as an inch away from recording a goal there. Very good technique generally. A bit surprised at, it, at, it, at his approach to that ball, that free kick on this occasion. Here's Livingston. Marshall spreads it wide to Kevin Hall. Tries to dart by Demarion Harris. Loses possession. And amidst all his pleas, play resumes. Here's Thomas now. Connects well with McKenzie. McKenzie. And uh, the referee points to the spot. Wow. Takes out a card as well. J. Lloyd Smith, the guilty party. Jaheim Williams pleading for mercy. Carvel Banton says no. It's a penalty for Mona. In added time in the first half. Well, let's see. On the live shot, it seemed like the ball was played. But yeah, what a big moment for Mona. Mackenzie. Well. I was shocked when I saw it yeah. live. I, and that hasn't really convinced me otherwise either. No, he played the ball. Yeah. In fact, I, I wondered at first if the reason Carvel Banton blew the whistle was because he took out the right leg of, of Mackenzie. But he didn't touch the right leg at all. He played the ball. All ball, in fact. Bad call there. Shocking. Shocking call. Let's see if McKenzie can convert. You'd say it would be lights out if he does. McKenzie from 12 yards. He saved Jaheim Williams. Perhaps the most important save of his schoolboy career to date. Well, Mona, we spoke about them and penalties. It's yet another kicker in Denzel McKenzie. And it's four misses in a row for Mona from the penalty spot. They held the lead. They held the lead twice. Twice in the quarterfinal round. Got penalties to extend it and missed. And they have done so again. Three misses in three games. Not the kind of statistic you want for your team. Here's Thomas in the area. Smith, unbothered by that previous challenge. Still sticking to his defensive tasks. So, Carvel Banton has seen enough of the first half, a half that Mona has controlled by virtue of goals scored. Two they have. St. Andrew Technical, they have a lot to consider in their halftime talk. He's doing his right now, Craig Butler. And the heads, the smiles, the eyes. Not showing the kind of confidence you expect from a team that has made it to semi-final last season and to the final as well St. Andrew Technical and they have to lift their heads and rebound in the second half Richard Livingston trying to give that team the confidence Jaden White the goalkeeper coach also giving a, a brotherly lecture to J. Lloyd Smith it's half time between St. Andrew Technical and Mona
The JPL and Sports Max, Malines United versus Mount Pleasant Football Academy. Live Sunday, 3 p.m. 4 in the rest of the Caribbean. Then Ardip Gardens versus Tivoli Gardens, the West Kingston Derby. Sunday, 6 p.m., 7 in the rest of the Caribbean. Then on Monday, Harborview, they host Humble Lion. 5 p.m., 6 in the rest of the Caribbean. That's on Sports Max 2. Also in Sports Max 2, Cavalier versus Waterhouse, 7.30 p.m., 8.30 in the Eastern Caribbean, that too on Monday. Welcome back to the Anthony Spalling Sports Complex. Mona versus St. Andrew Technical in this quarterfinal Manning Cup fixture. Mona leading 2 0 at the half. 45 minutes of play left. Chris Taylor can stats provide one of the most scintillating comebacks we've seen over the schoolboy football season this year. Well, they have the depth, they have the ability. Just against Casey a couple days ago was the first time they have trailed all season. They couldn't get it done. They haven't really looked likely to get back into this game so far. So, But they have the talent, they have the ability. That's how this, the, the group looks at this moment. Mona in first position with five points. Kingston College, who trails St. Catherine, in second position on four points, as well as St. Catherine. But they have a, an inferior goal difference to St. Catherine, hence their third place. Of course, just the top two to go through. St. Catherine currently lead 1-0. And Casey are down to 10 men as well. But yeah. Mona with another big opportunity to go, to take the game further away from stats. Almost the last kick of the first half. Missed another penalty. Four games in a row they have missed penalties. And needless to say, it was a really poor call. It, it, that certainly was not a penalty. And anyhow, maybe retribution. Yeah, I would definitely think so. But you'd have to think that they need to get it together to Mona as to who is their designated penalty kicker because four different kickers as well and four misses. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, if you count the two that they scored in the Jonathan Grant game, it's six different kickers because three different kickers in that game, two scored, one missed. Uh, I guess one by one they're trying the entire squad. Well, it has hurt them already. Here's Salmon trying to do some damage to Mona. Peralta was there to mop up any danger. Because if you think about it, they did have the lead in both their quarterfinal matches against KC and St. Catherine. And missed penalties cost them. Ended up with a draw. So, let's see what happens here. Salmon doing well there to hold his own and gets the corner kick for St. Andrew Technical. It's a bright start for them so far. Can Kevin Hall give a sweet delivery corner kick was poor against KC you couldn't see where someone from St. Andrew Technical wanted to take the game by the scruff of its neck and lift their heads and, and really do damage and we're yet to see it in the first 46 minutes here as well. Where they are obvious front runners this season. And because they haven't trailed at all, they have now struggled when put in that position. The psychological aspect of the game, certainly nothing to frown about because especially when you are schoolboys and you hear all the preseason chatter, a lot of bloggers sharing their opinions. It can give you a false sense of security. And it really takes maturity and wise counsel to bring them back to level-headedness. Here's that delivery. Easily handled by Jaheim Williams. Leon Brown on the ball. 
Of course, after the first round, these are the second, well, first and third ranked teams, respectively. St. Andrew Technical was the number one team, and Mona were the third ranked team. Mona undefeated so far this season, it must be said. Eight wins from eight in the first round. And then two wins against Jonathan Grant and a 10-1 aggregate. And then, of course, the, the two draws in the quarterfinal round so far. So they haven't tasted defeat. St. George's College, the only other team having that distinction undefeated this season. And I guess you'd have to say KC on a technicality because they did lose their first game 4 0, but then were awarded the points. Livingston lifts it in the area, played by Mona. To Shane Gordon. Many more options with Gordon. Here's Stats. Hall. Salmon sends it across. That was too obvious. And Hall has been guilty on quite a few occasions. No trickery at all to his play. It's just very obvious what he's going to do every time, and they have read him well. Here, number 18 on the on the flank. dangerous attack that St. Andrew Technical have had all season. That's been the most disappointing part to me. I mean, where is Leon Brown in both of these matches? He's been nullified, not really getting involved, not ensuring that he gets the ball there. Number nine, 14 goal man this season. Don't even think he has had a shot in these two games. Of course, they've made a change because of that. Marshall has come out. And on is Frankson. Three goals and an assist for Frankson. There's Leon Brown. These big name players on the St. Andrew technical team are, are who have to be stepping up now. Somebody has to step up. We spoke about the captain's energy in that match against KC. Just looked a defeated player from the conceded. And Philip Williams can't do it for them from the bench. His players have to step up. Here's Livingston. Trying to be a little bit more vocal, but his body language as well, not the best. Doesn't have the bite that sometimes a captain needs to have. A credit to Moyne, they have been very focused. Throwing taken quickly by St. Andrew Technical. Swans are being challenged by Hall. Hall stabbed it across. Salmon on the ball. Salmon brings it to Livingston. That's not the time to sky it. That's not the time to sky it at all, Mr. Livingston. What a glorious opportunity they had, Chris Taylor. Yeah, not the best defending. Goodbye, Salmon. And just slashed at it. And then look at, look at that. No conviction from Livingston as well. Just look at that. Just putting, not leaning over it any at all. And that, that's a disappointing finish. He's a two-footed player. I'm not sure why he went with the left foot on that occasion. Nine goals, nine assists. I don't have a big problem with him going with the left foot, but in terms of the technique, had time. That's why I had a problem with yeah. it, because you needed... Yeah, but he has and a he technique on the left foot. He just didn't show it there. It would have been much easier just to convert that on the right foot, because... Yeah, we might differ there. <laughs> <laughs> The first real goal mouth action.
Whistle on the play there. Yeah, a bit clumsy on that occasion. It clashes of the number fives. Gale. You couldn't find two defensive midfielders last season better than Nikoi Gale. Arguably the best in schoolboy football last season. Speak about the best. To John Whisper Richards. Leading scorer last season in the Manning Cup. Days away from going off to Chelsea. Already signed a pre contract. Here to support Craig Butler instead of his school, Kingston College, who are also playing. They are part of the Phoenix Academy. Today. It's a day of two matches. St. Catherine currently lead KC by a goal to nil. Mona, as you can see, enjoying this lead. Maybe a, a good opportunity here to, to make some other inroads. Well, it's his birthday, Dejon Richards. Officially 18 years today. Ball was laid on the platter there. Parchment didn't get the memo, it seems. His parchment. Trying to send it forward for Mona. Gooden in a no-nonsense mood there. Thomas takes the throw. Leon Brown there trying the acrobatic clearance. Not sure what for. Gale boots it forward. Rubino Gordon in defense. Here's Atkinson. Stepping forward is Atkinson. Pokes it forward for Salmon. Good defensive work that from Mona. Concedes the throw in, but. They now have a corner kick does St. Andrew Technical. I'm not the only one who's had a problem with the numbering system, the font used, and I can't help but talk about it. I'll be the first to admit that I have, I'm sure I've called 13-18 and 18-13 on a number of occasions. Here's the corner kick. In the area, couldn't rose up. Bernard able to handle it in the end. He's bit bruised good really does well to rise for the headers Bernard being surrounded by a number of his teammates. Gordon Johnson, Harris, Brown. Here's the first goal of the encounter. 
The corner kick came from Denzel McKenzie. Rubino Gordon going to the near post, going low. Flick on header. And then the second one, Romarian Thomas broke forward. Jaheem Thomas came forward. James Williams rather came forward. The goalkeeper unable to bring him down. Thomas played it for McKenzie. McKenzie in the back of the net. Mona's trying to come forward. Just over half an hour left in this encounter. Handled well by Salmon. Here's Livingston. Trying to come forward. Pass wayward. Well, they definitely have the support of the drummers still. The St. Andrew Technical. Can it strike a rhythm for them? Had a flicked on by Livingston, but Rubina Gordon was there to play the ball out for throwing. Taken quickly. Thompson. It's another throw in. Thompson on the ball. Smith. Control there was a bit lacking from to have been Atkinson. Here's Leon Brown. Trying to turn, loses possession. Harris now breaking forward for Mona. Thomas on the ball. Shows a bit too much of it, and Nicoy Gale gets it. Here's Livingston. Has space to drive forward. Atkinson, his final pass was poor, but still falls for Hall. Parchment able to boot it forward. J. Lloyd Smith brings it under control. Gale. Thompson. Livingston, his ball forward, intercepted by Gordon. Alex Avery Gooden there in a battle with McKenzie, comes out on top, plays it forward. Not using the aerial ball as much as they did in the first half. I'm sure they were listening to us, Chris Taylor. Here's Kemar Thompson, stepping forward now. Plays it back to Gale. Pass good. The referee gives the call. Taken quickly. Here's Brown. Oh, just wide of the upright. He's saying, hey, referee. Members of last year, that young man from Calabar. TikTok famous. And Andrew Technical, they did, they wasted no time to take the kick. Wonder if that ball was still moving though. I think it was. Yeah. So that's Gale. That was a situation where probably the whistle should have gone for it to stop. Salmon on that occasion. But yeah, finally a shot from Leon Brown. It comes forward. Salmon missed terribly. Brown's boot. High on that occasion. Offside. Is it? I need the ear from. High boot and not offside. Okay. Here's the flick on header. Just Even. wonder if on that occasion, if someone was offside though. Before that. Just look at. Because the signal from Banton, I think it was offside, you know. Yeah. And he's get Yeah. The assistant. It is offside. 
the headed ball to Samon. He was ahead of the defense line. But yeah, more positiv positivity from St. Andrew Technical. Gordon is off the Samona making a change yet again. Or making a change, I should say. <laughs> Urbino Gordon there. 14 goals, but he's in the heart of the defense. He's had a good game, actually. He really has. Yeah, he is demanding things in that back line and making it very difficult for stats. So it's Wazo. Denzel McKenzie, make that Thomas trying to navigate through two players. That's regain possession. If you look at this shot now, 18, and I, I tell you. <laughs> That's and, all. And 13, it's it's really. Yeah, unless you're seeing it close, close up like that. Kevin Hall there, their right winger. Still not seeing enough wide play from St. Andrew Technical, which was something they were known for throughout the season. That switch of play, missing in both these games as further changes are made. Hall is off now, so you won't have that problem with the 18. Bygrave comes on. Two goals and three assists for Jamal Bygrave. They need goals, stats, and they need them quickly. The captain is taken off as well. That tells you something. And Terrain Hall is brought on. Came on in the last game as well. Hall with one goal and two assists. When you have to take off your captain at 65 minutes, it, there's a lot of stories in that. Good. Was the captain in some instances? Nikoi Gale has taken over the armband now. Yeah, Gooden last season was was the captain for majority of it. Here's that. And it was a stub substitute by Grave running onto it. Good attempt by the number 19. Looking for his third goal. Finally. That kind of play which we're talking about, the switch of play from one flank to the other. Good overlapping run. But yeah, the finish just needed to be a bit lower. Good, good power. But yeah, shots even. But we don't have to tell you who is more accurate. <laughs> Three to nil. And for stats' sake, you hope that doesn't reflect on the score sheet as well in the final analysis. throwing just in front of this energy technical bench they come forward Carlton Brown Brown from distance Still 1 0 with between St. Catherine and Kingston College. St. Catherine leading by a goal to nil. 55 minutes gone in that match. KC down to 10 men. Patterson, the man sent off. And Watson, the goal scorer for St. Catherine.
certainly would be interesting if both of those teams, St. Andrew, I mean, that's St. Catherine and Mona, advance from the group. Both of them being in the first round group as well, both of them being in the same first round group. Here's good for stats, brought down by Suazo. Ball lifted in the area. Frankston is there. Got to head to it, but wasn't on target. We try to recycle now. Playing the ball on the surface much more. In the first half that would have been lifted high much earlier. They tried it a while ago, didn't work in their favor. Gets a throw in. Substitute by Grave. Looking to take it. Does so. Smith to Thompson. Gale. And you'd think with a 3 5 2 formation, five midfielders. You'd think that they'd have more or use more outlets in the middle of the park. But that hasn't been the what we've seen from St. Andrew Technical. Here's Leon Brown. Hasn't really sparked as the number nine, the 14 gold man for St. Andrew Technical, Carlton Brown. Thomas. Well taken by McKenzie. Just had a shot there of the president of the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association, Garth Gale, also principal of Charlemont High School. Beside him was Kaden Webley, junior brand manager for Digicel. I'm sure she might have a prize or two to give out later. Andre Virtue. Head of Ballers Academy. Former national youth player as well. And Jamaica College, number seven standout. Download the Sportsmax app today. Get it on the Google Play or the Apple App Store. And feast your eyes on the variety of sporting Treats available on the Sportsmax app, of course, on the Sportsmax Plus channel, available exclusively on the app. You can watch. You can watch schoolboy football for free. Cylinder Technical trying to recover from two-goal deficit. Moments like that won't help at all. And the minutes just go by so quickly. Thomas does well brought down all ball says the referee now stats able to break here's Atkinson puts it forward Leon Brown now goes wide he was offside
Oh, lovely move by Thomas. I don't think that's a penalty. Played the ball, didn't he? Then Thomas fell over the leg. Well, they're watching their up. Love to see it again. They're certainly looking for the replay. Here it is. Through the legs. Did he actually throw the ball away? That angle not really conclusive. What I can tell you, that was certainly a closer shout yeah. than the first half penalty given. But yeah. Let's see here. Thomas throws it through the legs. Just look at the right footed part. Mm. Not sure he got yeah, the ball there. Not sure he got the ball. Might, maybe that might be more of a penalty. And he did look nervous. Was it Gooden with the challenge? Yeah, Gooden. Yeah, Gooden. I actually think maybe Gooden was the one who took down Thomas, and Thomas probably touched, touched the ball. That one might have more have been a penalty. Well, the game continues. By the way, talking about penalties, St. Catherine has a penalty against Kingston College. Do remember that St. Catherine missed a penalty against Mona in their previous game. Both teams actually missed penalties. Now St. Catherine have a penalty and an opportunity to go 2 0 up against KC. That wow. would bring the goal difference level, wouldn't it? Level zero. But St. Catherine would then have three goals more than Kingston College, who have two. Yeah. So Casey would drop into third position. Wow. J. Lloyd Smith here. Fouling Javier Dunn, the substitute for Mona. Quarter of an hour left in this encounter. Booted forward now. Here's Atkinson for stats. By Gray, gets it across. Frankson, Frankson, got the shot off, was blocked. Good Gale. Defending. Player down for stats. Player down, yeah. Word coming in. St. Catherine have converted their penalty. They now lead by two goals to nil against Kingston College. St. Catherine are now in second position behind Mona. So it's Mona 1, St. Catherine 2, Kingston College have dropped to third, and St. Andrew Technical are in fourth. Wow. As it stands, St. Catherine have scored three goals and conceded three. Their goal difference is zero. Casey, negative one on their goal difference. St. Andrew Technical. Under quarter of an hour. To keep their season alive. Still lots Mona. to play for. Yeah. Same amount of time to ensure their season <laughs> remains alive. One goal can't help them though. They need two. Smith. Gooden. Of course, a draw for them and two goals would mean that they have four goals and they would be better off. They would have been the highest scoring team in the tie-up. And at that point, Mona would actually drop out. <laughs> so, 
Wow, so interesting, isn't it? Yeah, so many things can happen. Remember that at the start of the day, St. Catherine were in fourth position, and now we're in second. What a difference a day can make. Mm. Or a goal. Or two. <laughs> So as it stands, Mon on five points and Catherine on four with a zero goal difference. Minus one for Kingston College, also on four points. Stats on three points. The permutations are there for your viewing pleasure. Time for the Sportsmax that moment. The penalty saved by Jaheim Williams. And yeah, Denzel McKenzie denied from a second goal in the afternoon. Jaheim Williams coming up big for St. Andrew Technical. A deserved save. Of course, suspicions on that penalty call. Of course, brought to you by the Sportsmax app. Get the Sportsmax app and follow all the action in schoolboy football in Jamaica and in Trinidad and Tobago for free on the Sportsmax app. Ten minutes left in this encounter. Mona leads St. Andrew Technical two goals to nil. the teams who are third and fourth in the group would drop down to the Walker Cup and what a present the ball has come all the way in my hands perhaps I'm the man of the match Good. Takes the throw quickly. J. Lloyd Smith on the ball. They have so much space. The Brown. Gale. Look at the space they have there. For all the space in the middle of the park, they've not been able to breach the defense. If they come forward, here's Salmon. Has to go wide. Still with the ball is St. Andrew Technical. Delaney White, the man brought down on that occasion, a substitute. Can this be an injection of life in the season for St. Andrew Technical? Very careful, Banton. Trying to put the ball back a bit. White. 
Almost testing the keeper there. Wasn't a bad effort. Had a lot of curve on that one. Substitution being made for Mona. Marion Thomas, number eight, exiting the game. Adriano Vassal coming on for him. That in the 84th minute. Of course, for Marion Thomas having an assist for the second goal. Over 70 minutes gone in the match between Casey and St. Catherine. St. Catherine still continue to lead by two goals to nil at Prison Nova. So as it stands, Mona and St. Catherine will be heading to the semi-finals of the Manning Cup. Both coming out of the same zone in the first round, zone E to be exact, in which Mona finished first and St. Catherine finished second. Casey and St. Andrew Technical are heading out. Pressure mounting now on St. Andrew Technical. Can they keep their season alive? Mona says no. Here's Gay. Leon Brown having to drop deep. Midfield roll. It's ball coming forward. Bernard easily handling that one. The, if stats know the urgency of the situation on hand. A bit relaxed in their play. Have they resigned themselves? Let's see. Delaney, Delaney White. Good. Good going from distance well not the level of accur accuracy that we usually align with Gooden so St. Catherine's second goal came from the penalty spot Romain Walters their captain and number five the player converting for their 2 nil lead Watson and then Walters the scorers for St. Catherine course tomorrow two big matchups as well Jamaica College versus St. George's College Heidel versus Tivoli yeah Tivoli already out can't go through but lots to play for for Heidel the draw is good enough for Heidel yeah that would bring them on five points draw good enough for St. George's as well but Jamaica College have to win or the defending champions will be out. And guess what? Last year's beaten finalists are heading out too. As it stands. It would be three of the semi-finalists from last season out if those permutations are fulfilled. Yep. One would be through though. They lead here. 
Mona High. The only one. Yeah. <laughs> Lifted up. Trying to get the hitter on, but Gordon was it again. Couldn't put the throw in. Even McKenzie, the deepest player back for Mona, he's not taking any chances. Denzel McKenzie is white. Gale was a bit too slow on the ball there. Good. Lifted in the area now. Gale. His pass to Thompson was off. Thompson now gets control. Too good to Gale. Gale's pass cut out. Hasn't been the most attractive footballing match we've seen all season for sure. From either team. It actually yeah. has been disappointing, I think, in terms of the quality. Philip Williams must be very frustrated and certainly St. Andrew Technical in these last two games. Their performance way below par. Credit to the opponents, but still, if you want to be champions, you've got to step up to the plate and, and bring performances. And none of his players on the field, including his captain, who he's had to take off, have raised their heads and said, look, let's give it our best fight here. Let's go down with a big effort. Still not seeing a player from St. Andrew Technical. Maybe the closest one being Gooden. That, that has showed that kind of tenacity. And Mona, they have certainly played the better 89 minutes so far. Yeah. Of course, Rubino Gordon, one of the players who would have mentioned for Mona as having had a very good game. Flick on header. Yeah, for me, it's Gordon. Especially... If they keep St. Andrew technical to a clean sheet, he scored a goal at one end and he has defended so well, organized the back line. Here he is, very vocal as well. Not regularly you see a number nine at, in this kind of position. But so yeah. eight minutes added to the second half. Of course, Mackenzie would also get a notable mention, even though he missed a penalty because he did have a goal and an assist. Goal kick. Well. Substitutions coming in. The substitute being pulled out. Should be done. Sean Layton. Here's Thompson. Just not seeing urgency. Not seeing it at all. Hall, the substitute there, was trying to turn. Ball booted upfield. J. Lord Smith miscontrolling. Substitute Layton stumbling. Gives a possession. Here's Hall. Swans are doing well in the defensive end of things. Here's Gooden. Wait, that white, he was trying the shot.
Parchment playing it forward. Layton. Perhaps should have held up the ball a bit more, Layton, to run out the clock. Three minutes having, having elapsed out of the eight. Over 80 minutes gone in the match at Prison Oval. Still 2-0 to St. Catherine. Watson and Walters are scorers. And Kingston College, well, they need to find a goal. Or they'll be heading out just like this St. Andrew technical team. They find it hard now, and, and quite frankly, based on the balance of play, they don't deserve to, to get something from this game, St. Andrew technical. They have been outplayed by Mona. Yeah. Credit to Mona, who have missed a penalty as well, and they have this 2-0 lead. You just don't see how Stats are going to find two goals in this time. Philip Williams, wow. He looks a frustrated man. Crunch time of the season, and his team just haven't risen to the occasion. They haven't managed being favourites very well. In all of the season that they have really progressed deep into the competition to the finals, they've always been outsiders who... Always been the underdogs, yeah. even though you expect them to be there. They have not been expected to, to necessarily win. And a lot yeah. of persons... Don't, don't take that part seriously, how much added pressure it is when you are favourites for something. And it must be said over the years that it's something that JC, especially in this in these last this last decade, have dealt with well. Well, yeah. Is what? But I can tell you it's not only the two matches here in Kingston that I'm looking forward to tomorrow, but certainly the Costa Cup matches because that, those groups, let me tell you, they are going to be as, as confusing as these are. <laughs> <laughs> I expect a, a, a surprise or two. Good. Free kick. In fact, the 4 0 win for Garvey Maceo over BB Coke was a surprise to me. Not that Garvey Maceo necessarily got the victory, but the, the, the scoreline, 4 0, I just didn't see that coming. BB Coke have had such a good season, come out of a strong zone, and have been doing well. But Meron Gordon and company, well, they pulled them apart. Peaking perhaps at the right time is Garvey Maceo. Overconfident, perhaps, of BB Coke. They do have a player like, like, like Cleo Clark who on his own can win a, can win a match. Here's the delivery. It was put outside for a corner kick. Yeah, he hasn't been tested today, has he? Akeem Bernard, he is well. If he could have every game like this, he would take it. Really straightforward game for him. Amazing. You're talking about a team who has scored over 60 goals this season. And in almost 180 minutes they haven't been able to find one this is there on the play just about two minutes to go that's going to be it you know Dean Smith I think so too yeah I think this is a free kick in Mona's direction is it it should be shouldn't it Maybe not. Maybe not. Carlton Brown will rise to a yellow card. Oh, a red. It's a second yellow. Carlton Brown being dismissed in added time. It was a challenge on Gooden, who was trying to turn him. He'll have to sit out a match. Will Carlton Brown. Here's the replay. Yeah, he really ran into the back of Gooden. Yeah, well, luckily for him, it won't be the semi final of the Manning Cup that you'll miss out on. It will be the first round of the Champions Cup. If we do call that lucky, of course, the Champions Cup starts at the quarter-final stage.
Delaney White with the delivery. Brings it in the area. Easily handled by Akeem Bernard. He'll spend as much time as possible on the ground. And I tell you what, St. Andrew Technical, we'll see them in the Walker Cup. Mona Pride, alive and well. Bumper Hall Harte is also alive and well. The referee has seen enough. The final whistle in this quarter-final encounter between Mona and St. Andrew Technical. Mona Pride alive and well. Craig Butler has a reason to rejoice. Back-to-back -back semi-final appearances in his third season in schoolboy football. Philip Williams, for the first time in six years, will not see the semi-final of the Manning Cup. St. Andrew Technical, a picture of disappointment. The pressure of being pre-season favorites, perhaps in the end, too much for the team from Bumper Hall. And yeah, the disappointment, the resignation, it's evident on a face like that. Joy and jubilation on Mona Road. Mona High through to the semifinals and the first round of the Champions Cup. Jaden White knows what it feels like to be in a Manning Cup final. But again, he knows what it feels like to come out on the bitter end. Full-time score, Mona 2, St. Andrew Technical nil. And perhaps we should plug this in. Kingston College had drawn one goal back, and that would put them back into second place and through. Oh, wow. It's all happening on decision day. Carvel Banton sent off this encounter, and in the seventh minute from a free kick, that flick on header by Rabina Gordon gave Mona the one nil advantage. Yeah, he went low at the near post and Jaheim Williams didn't have enough. J. Lloyd Smith didn't have enough to bring it out either. Rabina Gordon, 14 goals this season. They would continue to push forward through Kishane Gordon. And he fired wide. Jaheim Williams put in a hand to it, but Nothing was on it in the 21st minute. Ball played forward for Romarian Thomas. Jaheim Williams tried to take him out, but he stood ground. Played it to Denzel McKenzie, who fired home. 2 0 for Mona. And Denzel McKenzie, 20 assists, 10 goals. What a season he's having, the number 10 for Mona. Here's another look at the shot. A clean finish. Poor defending all around from St. Andrew Technical. And the keeper was trying to hold up the play, but the referee ignored his plight. Joy for Craig Butler and Kevin Jones, the principal of Mona. Mackenzie would come forward. J. Lloyd Smith was a judge to have fouled him, got a yellow card for it as well. Penalty spot, 12 yards. Reject rejection from Jaheim Williams. A crucial save that would have given St. Andrew Technical a hope. They had that attempt in the second half. The free kick from Delaney White over the crossbar. They also tried to come forward here. Carlton Brown taking down Alex Xavier Gooden, rising to a yellow card. A second yellow sent off on the occasion. But he still had calm. He had the final whistle, Mona having the semi-final berth. Here are the match statistics. No shot on target from 10 attempts from St. Andrew Technical. That's telling. Three on target from 13 attempts from Mona. 17 fouls, nine of them to Mona. They had two yellow cards. St. Andrew Technical had one. One red card for Mona. They had one offside. Corner split. In the middle, four apiece. One save made by Jaheim Williams in goal. 60% of the possession for Mona. Two goals to go along with that possession and a berth to the semi final and the Champions Cup.
Kimani O'Sullivan is standing by with the Digicel Man of the Match. Thank you, Dean. I'm joined by Digicel Man of the Match, Robinho Gordon of Mona High School. He'll be presented with his Man of the Match award from Kaylin Webley, Junior Brand Manager of Digicel. Robinho, let's have a quick chat. You're into the semi-finals once again. How happy are you that you could have defeated Stats today and get to that round? Well, I'm very happy with myself. And in terms of that goal, the flick on, what was going through your mind when the free kick was coming into the box? Well, I owe my team a lot, so I just have to do it. And in terms of owing your team a lot, what, what exactly do you? Miss penalty last few matches, Ja, it's a must win. Well, I'm have to do it my own field, so that's it. And in terms of penalties, um, Mona tends to rotate their penalty kicks a lot. Um, is penalty shootouts on the menu in training coming up? No. No. Okay. Thank you, Robinho. All the best. All right. Yeah, that's man of the match, Robinho Gordon of semi finalist Mona. I'm joined now by coach Philip Williams of St. Andrew Technical Coach. I mentioned that Mona would be very desperate for a win today. Um, they set the tone early. Did your boys just, were your boys unable to just match the intensity of Mona High today? I, I, I think um, the goals came off of two mistakes. Um, but definitely Mona was a better team on the day. And uh, we have a good credit to them to put in a full 90 minutes and um, keep, us, keep us off the scoring sheet. Yeah, that's back-to-back -back games. You, you failed to, to score a goal. How concerning was the performances up front in these two games? Uh, yeah, very, very concerned. I mean, um, we, we did create chances, but we didn't put any away. And against a good team such as Mona, um, who did put away their chances, you have to, to, to at least put away one of your, your chances so as to, to, to bring some amount of competitiveness to the game. And from your perspective, just personally, um, what are your thoughts from such a taxing season, um, given the circumstances? I mean, um, this is this is this is the, the life that we we, we, we choose. So we, we we know the ups and downs of it, and um, it's just about um, taking a break for a while and um, recoup to come again next year. And in terms of taking a break, that means we'll see you once again in Stats Colors, right? Definitely. I mean, um, <laughs> the biggest part of this is, is developing football in Jamaica. And um, I think um, we are doing a part of that uh, um, at the schoolboy level. So we'll continue doing that. All right. Thank you, Coach. All the best. Yeah, man. OK. All right. That was Coach Philip Williams there. I'll be now joined by a very proud man, if you know him. A very proud man indeed. And he's joined by a special guest. Coach Butler, yeah, he welcomes his coaching staff and a very special supporter here. Coach, you're into the semi-finals. You got it done against this very difficult and talented stats team. How proud are you? Very proud of my team. Very proud of my coaching staff. Very proud of Dane. Very proud of the players. They played with all heart. They stuck to the, the task. We took Whisper's advice. Yes. And we did well. Yeah, you mentioned Whisper. He was actually giving some thoughts to the boys at halftime. Speak to me about his support as well as the coaching staff. Whisper is family. He, he grew up with us at Phoenix and at Mona and we work hard together. He's always been here. His heart has always been here and he has come out and helped us a lot today, we, especially with the changes and the tactical. And um, we parked the bus and towards the end we got the two goals we wanted. We parked the bus. The boys played disciplined. Um, Dane was excellent. You know, doing the job, I'm not well, so, boy, a lot was on his shoulders today, and he stood up and did well. So very proud of him, very proud of the team, very proud of the principal. The principal came up with the formation for today, believe it or not. Kevin Jones, top man, big coach. Right, top man. So, coach, I don't know if you mind, but I'd love to, to get Dujan's thoughts as it relates to the advice he would have given to the boys at halftime, you know, to see this result through. Any words, Whisper? Yeah, man, a few words is the Jean Richards. Well, coach, into the semi-finals, into the Champions Cup. Looking forward to more from you. Remember this, Mona is still unbeaten. Still standing, still forward, and still having pride. All right, coach, all the best. Thanks. Good job. Thanks. So the players showing camaraderie. And sportsmanship, a few of the St. Andrew Technical players greeting the Mona players who have every reason to rejoice. They put in a spirited performance and they eked out a 2-0 win over St. Andrew Technical. So here are the results from the matches today. 
Mona beating Stats 2 0. You just saw that. St. Catherine High beating Kingston College two goals to one. And of course, we're giving you the updated table as well. So, with that result, Mona topping the group with five points, Kingston College having a zero goal difference with four points, and Catherine negative one. And that that late goal from Kingston College sees them through to the semi-final and to the Champions Cup. St. Catherine to the Walker Cup stats to the Walker Cup. That's how Group 1 in the quarterfinals finish. More Issa Manning Cup quarterfinal action tomorrow. It's a battle of the blues. Jamaica College, they call themselves True Blue versus the light blues of St. George's College, Saturday, 2.30 p.m., 3.30 in the rest of the Caribbean. Mm -mm -mm, what a mouth-watering clash. Tuesday, in the Da Costa Cup, Garva Masia versus Cornwall College. 2.30 p.m., 3.30 in the rest of the Caribbean. It's been a good day of football in action. Mona beating St. Andrew Technical, two goals to nil. And they secure back-to-back -back berth in the Champions Cup and perhaps more importantly in the Manning's Cup. Yo, Issa, our schoolboy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, we go, Manning Cup. Only for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the Champions Cup, Ben Francis, Father Cup, which team are win the championship this season. Yo, Issa, what about the Iba school? I got finished the league and beat now. Which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, Issa, Missy fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the crowd, but loan and support us from school and community too. People nothing at the stand, some are the superior, they must have a bunch of TV too. Country and town unite for one reason. Issa, schoolboy football, run from look one, look all. Which team are the best and 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 the Competition and never have a nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm going to score from far and them love it with peaceful and the youths now. Are. Yo, it's a schoolboy football, no local. The youths are moving to international big league. And I still people are but member which party start. It's a schoolboy football. Good job. Look one, look all. Which team are the best and 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 the best and